Right. Soon we will have a very consistified uh, naming for all champions, because I know sometimes we'll get tweeted at and be like, you're saying that name wrong. Soon we will be saying all the names right. You guys are going to make me say Nidalee, aren't you? Because no one else says it. It depends what the standards come back as. That's true. Yeah. And if, if creators like, actually, we retconned it to Nidalee, I'll be like, all right. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just following the rules I was told. Anyway, Nid is banned here, so interestingly, Mia just being left to have Ziggs, I feel like he would have picked that anyway. Yeah, I I like that choice by Storm's Game Clan because they had a fair bit of trouble against it. Always one of those, either ban the things that beat you or just pick the things that beat you and just make TGD mix it up. Yep. Now they at work, they, they have to switch both their solo lanes, which is a huge amount of strategy. All right, TTD, got to think of something new right here. Still happy to pick up Elise on an early rotation. I would probably lock... Ooh, that's right. No, and Snow he's... has played Kha'Zix before. Had a really good performance with it, so... And he's really good against Ziggs. Yes, he is. Yeah, Ziggs is a very squishy man a lot of the time. Obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a skill matchup if they decide to go for it. I like the Jinx pick more than the Ziggs pick here. Mm. Or, sorry, I they like the Jinx, whenever. Jinx more than the Kha'Zix. Yeah. Uh, Jinx was banned last game. Yep. It's what Sunny had played the two games previously. Yeah. To victory. They might uh, synergize that with Leona and uh, just saw it all around. They can get the Kazakh later if they want it. And I'm trying to think right now because I'm thinking ahead about the Leona versus Zyra matchup. Okay. Because neither have been really popular at the same time. Like, you've yes. had people who played Leona, but like, like Zyra was huge in Season 3. Leona was there sometimes. More so season two and now. Right, yeah. exactly. So you didn't see them fight each other very often, and I feel like I feel like the counter engage is so, like in the, just the 2v2, the counter engage from Zyra is so high, if you don't get one shot, you win the match against Leona. Because she'll come in and have to like walk yeah, through plants to get away. Yeah. I say that's a big if, though. It is a big if. Especially because Jinx can, especially when she's level six, hit both Zap and Super Mega Death Rocket no matter how far away she is, mostly. Mm -hmm. And that would be enough for one shot, I think. That's true. If Leona catches this stuff. Pretty if, guaranteed. If those skills didn't exist, I'd say Zara would be able to handle it. So if Jinx didn't deal damage, it'd be okay. Mm -hmm. But... Well, from such obsessive range. Well, it's true. You know? uh, yeah, so the, the Zara pick would be really dangerous, I think. Mia had, like, barely any time left to pick, and he goes, okay, you know what? Lulu, the other big one he's playing on live right now. Uh, important. Lu important adaptation. Bit there. safer. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely needed. They're they're thinking one step ahead. This is good. No, we got Jinx. That means they're going to go Leona. Can't go Zyra. Can't go Zyra. Yeah. All right, continues one around. Still, though, the top lane Renekton says, all right, Mundo's not here, and we're probably not going to give him a double kill at six minutes, so I'm probably safe here. Let's try this one again. Um, that was part of it, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of circumstances in the game that just flip the lane matchups that you have to be ready for. Yeah. And that's, that's the, the risk of running Renekton. If you're not destroying by 20 minutes, you're not destroying at all no. in the rest of the game. And, uh, the risk got to go for here. So Snow, Sunny X, uh, Kha'Zix still open. Yeah. They don't have to do it now if they don't want to. They could be waiting on a little bit of extra CC. They could go for the nerfed Annie, although I think the Leona just fits them much better for what they're trying to do here. But they d actually don't know what AD carry, um, worst AD carry West is going to be going with. Mm-hmm. And I guess they want more reliability to lock down with Malphite. Because if Annie gets a stun, that means Malphite's ult can't get flashed. If I'm just trying yeah, to think, sure. think crazy here. I actually like this into um, with a Kha'Zix coming in. So the re the reason I yeah. say this is because I like Kha'Zix. Actually, Rumble would be really good too if, if Sunny played mm -hmm. it. Or um, if Phantom played it. Because I think you need some initial burst and some AoE to enable Kha'Zix to go reset crazy. And Jinx for that matter. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think Jinx Kha'Zix is really anti synergy. I'm okay no, with them overkilling, but it basically guarantees that it gets it gets rolling and then everyone else falls over afterwards. So um, a lot of engage, right? We'll start the fight and then soak up the damage because Malphite's going to do that. Kha'Zix to jump around. I think this works well for TTD. Unless it's a mid lane Malphite. It could be. We've seen that. It worked pretty well, you know. Mid lane AP Malphite. He could go with Fiends, which is the item everyone wants to go against Ziggs, mm -hmm. and then uh, become an assassin. A rock assassin. Yeah, you just knock them in the air and then someone dies but they hit the ground. Usually happens. Pretty wonderful. Yeah. Um, I remember Reckless had the uh, sad end of that one, fighting against Gambit. If everyone wants to see that, go look up Alex Each vs. Reckless. Oh my god. It is an awesome montage <laughs> of Alex Each's just destruction on Malphite. It, yeah. DFG Malphite, because you can DFG while you're in the air mm -hmm. to apply on your unstoppable force. Good lord. It's brutal. Yeah. All right, so we'll see what they go with here. 
Played an interesting thing in solo queue yesterday. I had to play against Master Yen Fiora on the same team. Okay. And I kept losing track of everything in teamfights because not only was he alpha striking, but Fiora was becoming untargetable too. So you'd run into this team fight thinking you're going to try and crush the two like squishy melees, mm -hmm. and they'd just be gone. And by the time they'd reappear, like your team your was team basically was dead, dead, and then you would be gone again. And you're like, ah, <laughs> can't deal with this. That's amazing. You wouldn't think it would be a good combo, but because they're both flying around, it worked pretty well. So that's, that's uh, a long time. No, but the <laughs> thing about Yi, though, is so I saw this on Snow's match history, and yeah. I didn't think it was real. So I didn't write it down in my notes. Okay, it is Kha'Zix. He was playing it, though. Okay. And I got a little excited. Uh, so yeah, there's the Kha'Zix that is going to come in here. He did play that in his pr in his previous game uh, in their win over Team for Nothing. 6-2-2. Mm -hmm. and two, did a really good job there. Was kind of the only guy who really picked up kills. Um, so I like this a lot. Snow's a really big force here. He's going to be nice and big. Of course, SGC running actually a very similar team to last time. Uh, only yeah. two subbed out champions. Yeah, I, I think so too. It's it's a little worrisome because Cavalier had a bad Renekton game. I can't imagine him losing lane to the Teleport Malphite this time. Malphite just, if that happens, then they deserve to, to not go through. I think that's a lane that has to win for them. Yeah. Uh, the rest of it for Tick, Trick, and Duck. I feel like I'm saying that wrong, but that is their name. That's Tick, the name. Trick, and Duck. Tick, Trick, and Duck. I feel like they have very high reset potential. They have a slight... Uh, worry of not getting the first one, I think. There's a little bit too much power in the assassination, hmm. so if they get a little bit ahead, they'll just roll over them. Okay. But if they get a little bit behind, I think they're going to be in a bit of trouble. Well, we'll see. I guess a lot of they're, that... They're so reliant on it, you know, especially because yeah. it's, it's going to be a tank Malphite since he's top lane and he has to mm. deal with Renekton, yeah. which means his initial burst on Malphite isn't going to take them down that low. Um, Jinx sitting at the back. Kazix can't really participate other than to clean up. And Elise yeah. is more of a poker, not a finish, like more of a finisher as well. Yeah. Like it's, it's a team of finishers with no one right. to start. It's, yeah. it's like, it's low damage starting. It'll start and uh -huh. they'll be at 80% and been like, yeah. bring it, Kazix. Percent, right. percent missing health damage. Let's do this. Which and means, actually, if Cavalier gets really far ahead, he can put himself in front and mm. just never let things start in that case. It also means that the Lulu is an exceptional pick here. Uh, and a lot of pressure will be on Lula to save that first guy. That's a good point. That's a really good point. So we'll see what they well, can thanks, do with Rick. this one. Yeah, no, I, I the Lulu I was like, bam. All right. No Kale bans. Just didn't want to go for that one. I know it's it's really based on individual yeah, champion pools, but another one I would see is like, yeah, Kale would totally work here as well. Oh, yeah. Trying to disable all of this. So battle lines getting drawn. Everyone running to their standard positions. We'll see where these guys go with this one. Of course, uh, Annie doing the standard thing. Start with W. Annie players out there, if you don't know, start with W, spam it, get your stun. That's why he's low on mana, because yep. he's been using W while he's running on the base. It'll regen. Not a big deal. I'm surprised more teams don't invade with Annie. Yeah, I'm surprised teams don't invade in general. I was saying this yesterday mm -hmm. with Kobe. Mm -hmm. um, but you like most teams don't start with wards. Like There was zero vision except people standing in brushes. Yep. And it's like, this used to exist in Season 3, and people still invaded. And everyone just kind of stopped. Yeah, and even though there's been the flat damage on turrets right now, lane swapping, if you want to, is a little bit harder to scout because people aren't putting deep wards in. That's true. Back in the end of Season 3, teams were very good at getting deep wards and jungle buffs, and then by that, predicting where the AD carry and support would go so they could always line up their lanes like they wanted to. They can't, uh, they can't do that as well anymore, seeing as the wards are just now placeable. And everyone's going to do them. Place them right down. Yeah, we'll count how many go down. I did. One. Wow. Do we get two? That was a really bad prediction, Jat. I did this last time. Like <laughs> six of them went down. There we go. All right, three. All right. That's good enough. That, I mean, that's still an F. Mm -hmm. Three out of mm -hmm. ten is not mm -hmm. exactly high. It's never going to be ten. Six is like the max. Because All right. they, they want to award uh, a lot of the exits or the middle points in the river just okay. to track the potential gank paths coming through. Like, you can see SGC has pretty much the four relevant jungle entrances mm -hmm. warded. So as soon as, if Nightmare were to leave the jungle preemptively, they would see him. Okay, well, right now we are at six. You said that was the most we would see, and you're dead on the money right here. So, bam, Jack, Crystal Ball. Oh, all right, you fail. Price is right, rules are intact. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. Normal lanes down here on the bottom side. Looks like level two will come in first for Tick, Trick, and Duck. They got the initial push in, but they're right underneath the enemy turret. This could be a little bit more difficult for these guys. We'll see. Maybe it'll pan out really nicely, but level two definitely is still first for TTD. Yeah, it's good that they've been able to take early power in this lane because Caitlyn shoves in very, very hard. It's because that Annie stun is charged level one. Stun, zap, yep, auto exactly. attack. Exactly. That's that's the move right there. Annie Jinx 
even after the nerfs, even though they can't chain the Annie stun with the Flame Chompers because the Flame Chompers arm time is slower, meaning when she places them, it is longer before they can stun. Mm -hmm. And Annie's just flat out stunning for half a second less early game. Doesn't mean level one's that much weaker. They still get the stun, they still get the damage, and that's how they push it in. Yeah. Well, here we go. I Nightmare already looking for the mid lane and is right behind Mia. Now, can you play around this? Should have Satchel try. Jump in. Slow is landing. There's a Satchel, and glad IQ is here. Barrier popped. Damage not quite across there. Uh oh. Nightmare is now in the middle of the enemy team. Mm. Mia trying to run. Gets picked up. The flash for my Nightmare. Let's see if he can get away now. Glad IQ flash for this one. It's a stun up. It's up in one second. Can he get it? No, not in time. Glad IQ gets the damage with the cocoon still in the air. One for one trade. Yeah, and since both kills went to the jungler, there is a substantial edge to Glad IQ because he's the one who gets to keep the double buffs, and he's also doing a attempt of keeping Kha'Zix off the turret here. Jungle-wise, Glad IQ is far ahead, but lane-wise, since Snow was able to stay in lane for that monster wave of creeps, he's going to be about a level up. And you're seeing that four to three right now. At some point, we'll have to back. Looks like he's out of flask charges here, but. We'll see what Double Buff Buy can do about the rest of this game. Bottom lane starting to turn back around a little bit. Nightmare walks through rewards, so Gladicu knows about this. Looks like he's going to look for the counter gank here, the same exact gank from Elise. Goes for the stun, mm. doesn't land it. I think Mia wish he would have hit that to get this gank in here from Gladicu. They're going to go for it anyway. Nightmare does not have anything to repel to safely just yet. Snow getting chased down. Does have flash. Doesn't quite need to use it, though, but is down to 200 health. Going to need to back soon. Yeah, that was a... I think a pretty big misplay by TGD right there. Nightmare tried to do the return gank on mid, even though he knows if there's a counter gank, he's going to have to fall away since he had given up the double buffs to Vi. Uh, because Glad IQ was there for the counter gank, it just completely turned that rain lane right back. It means MIA can... I'm just going to call him MIA. Okay. Mia. Whatever you want. What do you want? I like Mia, but... We'll call him Mia. That's just me. I'm just going to try to stop making that mistake. Okay. Just, I thought you were trying to make a pun there. I like no. Mia. It's just me. Oh. And an uh, uh I guess. Words. Yeah. That's just me, uh, I guess. No, it's horrible. We're going to anyway, move on. Bottom lane Mia, looking better. Mia came back in the lane because of that counter gank. Yeah, he did. Okay. Glad IQ looking for the bottom lane here. Is going to walk through a trinket ward if they don't time that one right. SGC is starting to turn this bottom lane around a little bit at least. Let's see. Trinket's going to end in about five seconds. I think they've timed that actually. It's timed out now. Yeah. By moves. Kobe okay. talks about this all the time. How. You just got to wait out the trinkets. And since no one buys wards early game, it's like a race to see who can get the first gank off or the first big gank off. Obviously, this is the second gank, but if Bonaparte gets at all aggressive, Vi will get him. Oh. Oh. No dive yet from Vi. Doesn't want to do it. Okay. I could have sworn she went outside of the brush, but there were no pings. She must have just been on the edge. Okay. Still secret, but I mean, Elise is coming down. They yeah. suspect something is up. She's waiting for the counter gank here. Damage coming across. Bonaparte going in hard. They don't oh. know about Vi. Definitely not. Flash forced away by Annie. Burning from Ignite still, but it's not going to be super effective here. Glad IQ going to be okay against the Flame Chompers. Nightmare's going to have to run away as well, but SGC, I feel like they got a slight edge here from that fight. Yeah, I think so. They were the ones pushed up beforehand. That was the whole thing we talked about in the pregame. Junglers waiting in lanes that are winning. Mm hmm usually come out on top if both junglers end up coming there, and it works out well for SGC. Cavalier, Phantom Joe, both level 6. Haven't seen these guys all game, but 40 to 40 in minions. Both have recalled for their respective resist items, and they're completely holding equal. Yep. I think, uh, I think it's the last we're going to have to see that lane. <laughs> yes, they're just going to be farming. Not for a while. Snow has to be a little bit careful here. Nice job dodging away a lot of these bombs. Mia running out of health. Uh, Flashes. Ooh, good barrier. It's going to put Mia to safety with almost no health left. And the Ignite wasn't used by Snow. Uh, that might have ticked him out, based on how low Mia got at the end of that. Uh, although, it means they're just going to continue to have to farm. There's tons of action in that mid lane. That's why Kha'Zix is a nice pick against Ziggs. It creates a lot of aggression. Ooh, Ooh a lot of damage coming into Glad IQ. Ulti coming across as well to wave clear the mid. And the Ignite would have been 170 damage, which oh. is about where Mia ended on. Yeah, and the red buff just spawned, though, as they came back. So oh. Ignite would have been, by the hair of his chinny chin chin or not, would have been extremely close. Even so, they because of the invade afterwards, Nightmare is able to steal the red and pull a bit of a jungle edge out here. Good stuff there. Gonna looks like he's going to repel the dragon to escape more quickly. That's nice. It's an exit, but not an entrance. Mm. But a good little knowledge there by Nightmare. By the way, if you invade yep. bottom side jungle, repel to, uh, repel to the dragon. Other side, after 15 minutes, you can repel to Baron. I would guess. If you're Hecarim. If you're he Ooh. You can turn your W on a blue buff 
from the outside of the wall and it'll reveal it for you and then you E over the wall. Yeah. It only works on buffs, not on small camps, even if you're getting damage. Yes, because it aggroes the, the monster and it attacks you, which reveals it for Fog of War. Yeah. There you go. Night Blue 3 taught me that. I saw that it video as well. just between me and him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> the world now knows. Sorry, dog. Next time people play Hecarim, it's going to get stolen. Mm -hmm. All right, Mia shoving up the mid lane. 13 minion kill lead so far. It's going to fall down a little bit more here, but ultimately that Ziggs pickup is working for him, I guess. Like, even though that like that level one was kind of rough, like the early yeah. gank or whatever, holding on just fine. Yeah, this is a much better start uh, by Storm's Game Clan. Also, uh, they have the Ziggs this time, so hopefully their wave clear and the early turrets don't start falling behind for them. That's one of the big things that happened last game. They started, they got down two turrets to zero at the start, and that really hampered their objective control later on. They started losing dragons as well. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to prevent that from happening this game, specifically by, I think, having Cavalier arrive in those dragon fights and being the Renekton. Like, the level 7 to level 12 or 13 Renekton is when you want to force those dragon fights, and that's how Renekton wins games. Well, but look at this one, though. He's actually roaming down before Phantom Joe's teleport is up by about 30 seconds right mm -hmm. here. So SGC, again, more timing from these guys. They timed the Trinket Ward in the bottom lane. They've timed the teleport from Malphite. They're going to have the numbers lead here for this dragon. Really smart move here. A lot of typing in chat, I bet, for these good timers. Uh, let's see if TTD can get anything back for this. The, the best thing TTD can do off of this is shove the lanes as hard as they can while everyone on SGC is at that dragon because that is an uncontestable objective when they rotate that well. Very nicely done here. SGC is certainly firing on all cylinders, I would say. Doing a good job of this one. Uh, Satchel Charge, Mia knows it doesn't do quite enough damage to make the casters die to the turret, so he sets those up nicely. Worst ADC West holding on really equally here to that Jinx of Sunny XX. He, sh he definitely lied to us in his name. He is by far not the worst ADC of the West. No. Yeah. Doing great. Uh, especially from Nordic East. Yep. Unfortunately, right on top of Ward, though, we could see another counter gank here. This is one that can actually backfire if they bait a little too hard. Let's see what happens. Sunny XX going to get knocked backwards into a Ziggs bomb, actually. A little bit of that right there. Ulti comes across, doesn't land on much. Gladiq forced to run away, slowed by Malphite. There's a two-man Ulti. Gladiq going to go down. Nightmare picks up one. Mia forced to run away, does not have much left to throw. It's going to be one kill picked up on the teleport counter gank. Yeah. Phantom Joe covered as much ground as he possibly could, flashing before result able to pick up that one kill, and it was a a successful teleport, I'd have to say. Even though, overall, the top lane trade there, I think, actually still goes to Cavalier's Renekton because he helped his team get a dragon, and just to kill over on the other side for a Tick, Trick, and Duck. Oh, well played then by SGC's top lane right here. Tick, Trick, and Duck still going to be pushing down to this bottom lane. Equal farm still on both these guys. A random question. I don't think this works. All right, what's so the question? You, you can, I know you can, like, flash, like, ViQ. You can flash Body Slam. You can't, like, flash Malphite ulti, right? Ooh. Does it move the impact area? I'm going to say no. I don't think it does either. I think it's very similar to trying to flash a Tristana jump. I don't think the damage lands well. I know you can flash uh, Playful Trickster, but that's because yeah. it's centered around him, yeah. as he just says he falls. A lot of these things are, like, execution-based. you got to, like, get it perfect. And there's a chance that the Malphite one does work. It's just, like, so risky. And no one's ever done it. And the fact that he goes at, like, Ooh, that's a low health bar. 30, 30 health. Mm. Yeah. Bye. He's going to go back to base. He's, he's got to heal up a little bit. It's sundown right now. He'll be back, though. Dawn is arriving well, without you, Leona. What actually used to happen, and this is why I don't think you can do the flash thing with Malphite, is before the projectile speed was increased on Malphite, the competitive Malphite players would actually flash point blank and then ultimate, almost like a flash pulverize from Alistair, mm -hmm. just so it landed. And I think if they could have done it the other way, they might have been doing it back then. That makes sense. Okay, Mia getting jumped on low health right here. The dive's still coming through. Nightmare actually deciding he doesn't want any of that. Actually, no, Snow does. He needs one more attack, though. Does he have the W? Nope, the bomb in invisibility. Going to trade, trade with the Ignite, though. Actually, advantage Tick, Trick, and Duck. They got the assist for it. I gotta say so too, and I think the more tr kills that get traded in lane, the better it is for Snow. He's the one who wants to kill. I think Mia is the one who wants to farm. 101 CS to 77. Oh, that lead will probably continue a bit because he shoves in Kha'Zix so well. But if they're trading kills, then Kha'Zix is staying even in gold and getting That's better. That's true. Good stuff then. Snow making that one happen. Very, very close fight right here. Everyone, of course, did trade summoners throughout that one. So mid lane, pretty prime. There we go. Flash stun goes in. ADC West does get slowed down. Lulu ult comes across. Not yet enough damage to get executed by the Jinx Rocket, but she does have the ulti available. 
Minigun, a bit of damage there, but disengages. Glad IQ is around. Does not look for a gank right here, of course, is on top of a ward anyway. Yeah, and that actually shows us right now... Oh, that was an ultimate for Harass. The Very benefit of the Lulu lane, because that saved them from getting spiked up by the anti combo, and now they're on the retaliation. There we go, a lot of pain coming across here, and that's going to be one kill picked up already. Sunny XX does go down. That's going to be unfortunate here, SGC making that one happen. I need better words for my transitions. I got lost. I like, they're retaliating or something. Yeah, I lost and that one too. These last two fights have been rough. You know what? They've been rough for Jinx as well because she has died. Aww. But actually, I think they just overstayed their welcome right there. Um, after using all of their skills, they didn't really have anything up defensively either. Mm -hmm. And it left a fairly easy gank for Glad IQ. Again, Vi spending a lot of time bottom lane. Uh, obviously, a pretty difficult to gank the other lanes, but a little bit easier than it was in the first game. I think we're seeing a bit of a tendency here for Glad IQ and SGC as a team to just want to get. Worst ADK, West fed, and it's working pretty well. 117 CS, highest in the game. Turret kill to his credit. It would be working well if he was getting assists, but at least they got the lane down. At least they got the lane down. He's going to be doing okay here. There's a random point. I don't know how on purpose this was, but uh, Sunny ulted uh, the Caitlyn after Lulu ult wore off. With the ulti on, it would have dealt more damage because there'd be more missing health. Yes. Because you, you don't like lose health again after the ult wears off, so we would be correct. at like 500 of, mm -hmm. 500 instead of 500 of 1,000. Also. And barely lived. You can also think of Lulu ultimate like a heal mm -hmm. that is not affected by healing debuffs. True. Because when you gain 1,000 health, you gain 1,000 current health and 1,000 max health regardless, and then when it runs off, you only lose the max health, not the current. Yeah. Which well, just speaks to your point of the ult would have been better while the Lulu ult was on. Yeah. Didn't go for it. And they can't ignite it either, so Lula, with a shield as well, gives you a lot of a sort of impervious health gain. Also, they could have just not ulted, because it didn't really do anything. Well, did some yeah. damage. I, I guess te technically that stopped Caitlyn from sticking around for the assist. Probably, so. yeah. Had to go Success. back. Jinx ults back up anyway. Haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen a lot of cross-map ultis in general with Jinx. No. It seems to be really, like, safe, conservative ones. Also, they're usually really early in fights, before guys get hit very hard. Yeah. You're right. Like, very few execute ultis. Here's my theory on that. Okay. I think it's because she gets so much move speed from getting excited in the late game team fights. She doesn't need the ultimate to clean up. And she wants to use it with the initiation to combo and potentially get the first get excited passive proc faster. Okay. So she wants to use the ultimate, get the kill, and then start running around fast. Whereas you think, since it's an execute, You'd want to wait for them to get low, and oh, they're running away now, I'll ult them. You see that occasionally, mm -hmm. but I think that's much less reliable than getting the first kill and then just literally running up to an auto-attacking someone. Yeah, I just don't even see those. I see, like, the Orianna ult goes in, they're all 80%, and she's like, yeah, Jinxel for yeah. 400 damage. Like, those are the most the ones that I see the most, and I guess because it has a base damage, mm -hmm. and it's a like pretty big AoE spell, like, it's just an opening burst <clears throat> an opening burst tool. It's um, basically like a Garen ult. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you should... Theoretically, should be waiting until they get fairly low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, unlike how you would use Darius ult, I know we talked about this before. Darius just freaking hits. Darius them should ult as soon as he gets five bleed stacks. You should not care that much if he gets killed. Although, no one's actually going to do that. Like I say that myself, and every time I play <laughs> Darius, I try and get the resets because it's really fun to jump around to multiple targets. Yeah, it is. Um, did you know, Elise Q right jumps to a target? I believe the target I is... I did know it jumps to a target. Yes, okay, okay. no, there's, there's more to that. That's part A of the, of the <laughs> setup. If the target is already dies in midair, it, like, refunds the cooldown. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, that from might... what I've seen. And she kind of, like, skids a little bit to the target and then kind of yeah. goes to the next one. I've definitely seen that before. Yeah, so my thought is I want to see a player Q to a minion, smite it, get the Q back, reach a champion. Ooh. I don't know if that would happen, though. I don't know how it tracks the cooldown. I like the way you think. Were you inspired back. by the Lee Sin play where he smited the minion and landed the Q? I'd actually thought this before, though. That, that was really sick. Um, but no, I'd seen that before and was just like, huh, you know, I keep seeing this come back up. But Glad IQ not in a great place. Lulu coming across to help this one a little bit as well, uh, keeping him alive a bit. The damage is just here. Everyone is in this fight. I don't even know who's going down. Looks like no one so far. Just trading blows back and forth. And uh, we're good. Stalemate. Yeah, we got a really important part of the game here, actually, because SGC is trying to make their mid-game power push. They've actually controlled a lot of the objectives here. They are currently up in turrets, and Cavalier is trying to make his impact on Renekton, whereas Ziggs' is siege right now, since he does have Zonis, is just massive. If they can win soon and get a big lead here, it'll transition. Ignite on a Phantom Joe. 150 health. Oh. That's going to be a Ziggs. will be picking it up, and the turret going down as well. 
SGC 3,500 gold in the lead and still pushing. Yeah, and they should continue to push because Malphite is down. The majority of the initiation is dead. There's not even a Tibbers here. An inhibitor this early from a game that was close could just blow it wide open. Well, there is a turret going down. Phantom Joe back up in 15 seconds. Has teleport available. SGC backs off with three, well, I guess two really good turret kills in this fight. Oh, yeah. That was... That was an incredibly successful push because before that they'd actually taken the dragon. So it's just a huge amount of objectives. And now the map is wide open for Renekton and Vi to go around and try and make plays together. Sure, I know I'm mentioning Renekton a lot for being a 0-0-1, but just the fact that he has a presence there and Malphite cannot answer that presence unless his ultimate is up mm -hmm. is making these pushes substantially more successful. Uh, well done here by Storm Games Clan to capitalize on all that stuff. Mia... Going to hold the mid lane. Ulti is up eh, not too soon. Has to clear at least one wave the old-fashioned way. It looks like Tick, Trick, and Duck not looking to pressure that right now. They're, they're, sweep away. they're trying to wait a little while. Yeah. I think they, they want Malphite to have his frozen heart so he can just kind of sit in front of Caitlyn and stop that from happening. Uh, and once again, this is, this is probably the fear that we talked about in their team composition beforehand. They have a bunch of people who can finish fights, but when they start the fight... They're not necessarily taking people that low. Uh, Bonaparte on Annie. Hasn't been getting many kills. He doesn't have any magic penetration on Annie. Just the Sight Stone. So his Tibbers at the start of the fight isn't necessarily bursting. Mm -hmm. Also, Malphite is full tank without any magic penetration, so his damage is very low as well. Who is actually starting these fights and getting people low so the Kazakhs can jump around and that so uh, Jinx can finish them off once she gets excited with her passive? I I'm not seeing it at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's why Storm's game plan is up 4,000 gold. We'll see if that can turn on later. Right now, Ziggs is going to sweep away this nice blue buff for himself, getting that mana up there, the cooldown reduction, all kinds of fun stuff. Sunny already being given away uh, the red buff here, so that's getting swapped around at 20 minutes in. You're going to start seeing the junglers give away their buffs a bit more here. AD carries getting the reds. Cavalier definitely playing aggressive. They got some ward control, looking into the enemy jungle. Yeah, this is a... I think it's a forced fight here. Um, SGC's going for this inhibitor, but I do not see Tick, Trick, and Duck letting this happen. I think Malphite's going to come around the back, and they want to fight right now. Well, they're going to find a three-man ultimate with the Jinx ulti, and here comes... Oh, Snow's jump is knocked around by Lulu. Forced to run away from this one. Ziggs comes across. Mia finds that one over the wall. Maybe even in Fog of War. Phantom Joe still getting knocked around. He's going to go down as well. And look at this. The cleanup now. Sunny trying to find Mia. Takes a bunch of damage. Does get a kill right there. It's going to be two for one right here. But still advantage SGC. And I think the inhibitor is going down right after the fight that we thought would happen. The initiation came. It was a very clean combo. But nothing died. The Lulu Walt came in right at the start. Snow was not able to have an impact on that fight as Kha'Zix. And maybe at the end, Sunny got one kill on Jinx, but the inhibitor went down and they lost the fight. And we see this coming in. The three-man ulti comes across. And yeah. I like that the Lulu ulti stops Snow's leap. So also the... Exactly. It stopped him from getting all the way onto where's JD carry west. And then he was free to deal damage at the end. And you could just see Snow got bursted down so excessively hard while he jumped in and got knocked up by the Lulu Walt that the reset threat was gone. Also, Annie and Elise are already on the retreat because, like, everyone tried to initiate all at once, but they initiated to a face full of Renekton and a face full of Ziggs, and it just didn't necessarily work out that well for them. Some nice dodging by Mia. Almost saved his life there, uh, but Sunny was a little too quick. And the last shot comes right there. Oh. I like the uh, the voiceover. Because, of course, uh, Jinx and Kate have a bit end. of a... Well, no, sorry, for Jinx, actually. I mean, that, one, that one's good, too. All right. right I like the, the Ziggs cream. Sorry, you're right. Okay. Uh, but Jinx goes, that's really hurt when she gets uh, Kate oh, ulti. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know. Because it probably did, and they, they have a history like that. They do. They can that speak troublemaker to Jinx. How many criminals has uh, Kate apprehended? I guess not many, because he wasn't involved in the only Jinx death. Do we know how, like, established an officer of the law they are? Like, Jinx and Caitlyn together. They're on the same team, by the way. Jinx, so. No, Vi and Caitlyn. Yeah, sorry. That, that, that. Oh, we have a full lore match. I didn't realize. Yeah, Vi exactly. And Kate versus They're Jinx. both chasing down Jinx. Man. Generally, if they team up, they usually win. Yeah, well, I know yeah. Vi apprehended one criminal. Okay. Because she was in the in the kill that we got on Sunny XX a while ago. Mm -hmm. Sunny, I feel like, oh, is They're been about involved. to get more. Ooh, that was a whole bunch of damage. And there's Vi, Officer of the Law. And Sunny does go down. Cavalier picks it up. Another criminal apprehended here by the Piltover Brigade. And we're going to see these guys still group up for this bottom lane turret. Guys are healthy. 
5v4 yeah. should be not too hard. That was a great capitalization of an overextended Sunny right there. Even though they didn't use the Assault and Battery to clear the way for the Ace in the hole, they still got both of them down, and it was a deadly combo. So that's yep. going to be more turrets and more power for SGC. They have a monstrous lead right now. Yeah, they just hit three ultis in a row. It was the, the Ziggs ulti, the Kate ulti, and the Vide is all like, thing, and you're gone. TTD not re-engaging this one. Caitlyn, sorry, uh, Jinx back alive now. We'll see if that makes SGC stop with this one and pause, or if they're going to hit take their 7,000 gold lead elsewhere and keep pushing. Well, they definitely need to keep the pressure up, I think. I think if Jinx gets to a lot of items, and if Malphite uh, continues to tank up, they still theoretically have a team composition that is better in the late game. Okay. But the early pressure, lane pushing, lane presence, tower pressing, has all worked out for SGC. And now that they have this big lead, you know, they have to mess up to kind of like get rid of it. Okay. Well, SGC will see if they can hold themselves to a pretty good spot. I feel like they played... Uh, for all the sort of the fact that they lost the first game, I felt like the first game by SGC was fairly clean. I didn't see any like really bad mistakes. It was just yeah, TTD like doing a really good job with barons and controlling objectives and whatnot. Really bad start. Bad start. Bad yeah. Start for SGC. Uh, really just hurt them throughout it because they you can see they are rotating quite well here. Especially they had a specific rotation in this game that was really good. I think it was around the dragon area. Um, yeah. Eight minute dragon, roughly. Mm -hmm. They pulled Renekton down. Phantom Joe couldn't get down there yet. No teleport. I really like that one, at least. And Ooh, the this ulti. might be a bit too hard. This is a really difficult attempt right there. Snow knocked into the air. Half HP as well onto Malphite. Who are they going to go for? It's going to be onto Snow still. Three man Malphite ulti. Jinx ulti comes across. Does not kill Glad IQ. Gets healed by a Mikhail's to stay alive, but there's the first reset. Can these guys keep going? Snow's been forced out of the fight. Sunny XX does not have a front line anymore. Nightmare forced to run away. One more shot does go down. Now, worst ADC looking for another one. Does have Flash chasing Bonaparte. Can he get this one? Trinket over the wall. Q oh. flashed by Annie. Going to stay alive, but 9-5 to five on the scoreboard and a 4-3 to three inside the enemy base. I don't know if they can get this inhibitor, though, because Snow went back to base and has full health. There's enough health on SGC that they can push through. Freak, this last fight, I think, just shows how far ahead SGC is, mm -hmm. but more importantly, how much they actually want to end this game sooner rather than later. When... Vi goes in that hard for, like, look how far ahead she goes. She, I believe she, did she flash over that? No, she just ulted over top of the CC. People aren't necessarily that close to her. Look at how long it becomes before anyone can follow up. Look where Caitlyn is on the minimap. Not even near this fight, but they got on the Assassin early. They made it so Snow wasn't a realistic opportunity for resets. Luckily, Sunny didn't get that kill right away, so he couldn't get excited and can't really hit people down at the bottom of that fight. And then once Renekton was in the fight, and once Caitlyn actually catches up, then they can take advantage of their lead. I just thought they went a little bit too early, but they clearly had it in mind. They were that far ahead that they could get away with it. Oh, very well played then, SGC. And the double kill going on to their Caitlyn, <clears throat> who has been having a pretty good match so far. Game one, of course, went to Tick, Trick, and Duck. SGC looking a lot better here in game two. Trying to tie this series up and bring it back in. Phantom Joe. Not in the best spot right there, running away. No. He's going to be safe so far, but Although SGC he does still have his turret. He knows he how to hold this top turret for a while. He's done a very First good job game, it never even died. So we're now, what, about 66 minutes into gameplay, and he finally loses his first turret. Wow, well Poor played guy. then. Yeah, it goes down, but I guess, oh, you know. They're trying to pull a trap here. I love Ooh. waiting in this bush. You hope to get access to worst ADK. Oh, they scouted it with a Ziggs bomb. Nice job, Mia, making that one happen. Sunny getting slow, but he's going to be okay. Peacemaker to the face. Okay, less okay. A lot less okay. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Wow. We're taking him out. He had barrier. He didn't think he'd die. This bottom lane matchup between Worst ADK West and Sunny, yes, the champions have always been Caitlyn, who always wins lanes, but just the item differential that's existed in both of these games is massive. At the point now, it is a... Pretty much a full last whisper. Sure, there's a static shift finish, but that can't happen in game three. I feel like SGC is going to try and push this on right now. Try to get the win. All right, Snow taking a whole bunch of pain. Malphit ulti onto two. Bonaparte going to go down rather quickly. Can Snow clean this up? It doesn't look like it. Already forced out of the fight right here. Doesn't even have evolved wings anyway. Phantom Joe's going to go down. Trading with Cavalier, but that's all right. Four versus three now in the base. SGC coming in with this one. Jinx has revived, but it's going to be the inhibitor turret going down. Maybe the inhibitor next. Yeah, they want a lot more out of this one. That was a quick disconnect, reconnect we're going to have on Cavalier. He's back in the game right now, and that is inhibitor number two, it looks like, going down. They're pressing this advantage very, very quickly and well. Sunny taking another Peacemaker to the face right there. Going to have to back off real quick. Jinx Ulti 
close. Almost takes down Mia Gladakiu and Lula. These guys forced to run away, but now two inhibitors gone. 27 minutes in, SGC looking a heck of a lot better. Yeah, I think they're going to go back, convert some of that gold into goodies, and then push for inhibitor number three. There's a chance they'll go for a Baron in between, but they haven't needed it previously, so it might just be a bit of unneeded risk, especially knowing how well Nightmare has fared with Smites yeah. in the first game on Elise. It might be the more... Uh, cautious approach to not even do bear and just continue pushing because with True. two waves of super minions coming in which by the way there are two super minions next to each other you told me this so all credit goes to you okay um <laughs> if you remember the way the double aegis aura works how both of the wearers get the benefit twice because it's an aura as well as a personal effect yeah the same thing works with the super minion bonuses for armor mr and damage yeah uh, which means when two super minions are next to each other they are much more powerful harder mm -hmm. to kill and do more damage yeah, it's a 70 armor, 70 MR, 70% damage buff. And times two. <coughs> uh, it's right. actually interesting that it's times one because they don't affect okay. themselves. Uh, of course. So it, yeah. they just get 70% more damage by having a neighbor. Yeah. The regular minions, no other difference. They've already got the ore onto themselves. But as far as relative power goes, actually more like more important than the double Aegis aura works in that case. But yes, they get freaking massive. They get really hard to kill. So they if no you're ever wondering why double super minions take you so damn long to kill, yeah. that's why. They no longer have negative MR. They have 50 instead of negative 20, and that makes things rather hard to deal with. SGC still chilling here at this bottom turret right there. Ziggs comes across. There's the Malvilty onto ADC West. He does take Ooh, a bunch Mia's of pain. down. He's going to be all right. Mia does go down. 5v4. Cavalier in the front line, tanking up a lot of damage, trying to run away. Snow shows up, doesn't get much for this one. Knocked up by Vi. That's going to be him. Flash away, but still dying. Lula in the front line. Now doesn't want to be there. ADC West also not in a great spot. They'll slow onto Lula. Bonaparte, oh, baits himself out a little bit, and it's going to go down. ADC West picks up two kills. Look at the turnaround right there. Now a 3v2 on the map for SGC. Yeah, you could see Mia went a little bit too uh, hyphy there, trying to finish off the Jinx kill, but it just didn't work out for him. However, Worst ADC was so strong in this fight, he could stay safe and clean up near the end. I feel like now they're just going to crush through. They already got one Nexus turret. They're going to go for the third inhibitor as well. Venom Joe trying to get rid of Worst ADC West. Ulti's Pretty not up strong. for another minute or so. Yeah, really tanky man. Decides to push him away. Actually, might keep chasing this one. Q should be back up soon. Flashes takes him down. Phantom Joe now chasing down Cavalier. And uh, a bit of a miscommunication. Nightmare does not yeah. is the only one going for this one. Maybe he'll win this fight, but of course their Nexus slowly dropping. The turret does fall. So there are zero turrets left. No, one turret left in the map. Bottom inhibitor turret left in the map for TTD. Yeah. This is a rather good looking game for Storm Games Clan. Yeah, they can just take the dragon while they're waiting for Caitlyn to respawn as well. Uh, you could definitely see a bit of the late game fear that TTD would have in this game if it were to get there just by how well Malphite handled Caitlyn in that fight, despite Caitlyn's very generous amount of items right now. Mm -hmm. But it's just not there, I think. The fact that there's no Nexus turrets left to defend, the fact that that fight was actually misplayed by SGC before they were actually able to win it yeah. means that they can just continue to play a little bit sloppy as long as they're playing fast because that's the best way for them to finish this game. And they're looking forward there. Ascension used the dive in onto Snow. He's going to land here from Vi. He's going to do a pretty good job against Snow right there. Bonaparte not against Pop. Puts down Timbers. Does drop, though. Gonna this be is a 3v5, actually. Oh Caitlyn and Redaction aren't even close. <laughs> and they're just going for it. Slows land on a two. Medic, you forced to run. Is going to get over the wall. Lula, though, not in a good spot. Likely to drop. The jump in as well. Mikhail's keeps him alive. No, does go down to the Spiderlings. Would have been a Jinx ulti if not. Cavalier out of the front lines. Phantom Joe there to help. It's a 4v4 on the map. Phantom Joe gonna just walk backwards. Ziggs, though, still happy to chase down. And Caitlyn has joined the fight. SGC ready to push in. I wonder how long they're gonna be able to push this one in. There's a lot of time for TG to go back to base and heal, but Glad IQ and Cavalier are a little bit low without ultimates. Let's see how well they can push these inhibitors. It looks like there's not much opposition for them yet. Well, there's two home guard boots, so TTD are back into this mix right there. No cocoons going to land. Phantom Joe very low, but does get out of this one. At least into the air. Comes back down to safety. Uh, Sunny still putting the damage out, but in the inhibitor will fall down. Minion still knocking at these front doors here, but SGC is going to back off for this one. Hmm. They've been so close to finishing this game, I think. If that fight at the bottom inhibitor turret would have been a sl just slightly cleaner, the most minuscule amount of cleanness, yeah. uh, this game would have been over three or four minutes ago. But because they even engaged in that 3v5, people were low, they couldn't finish their push afterwards. Remember, there are not even Nexus turrets yeah. right now. 
for TTD. So if all they do is group up and siege that bottom inhibitor, the defense becomes much more important and more difficult because they don't even have the turrets anymore to take damage mm -hmm. or deal damage to minions coming through. I think about three more minutes and we're going to have a win here for SGC. Well, the buffs being swept away. SGC ready to get all their advantages all together. Infinity Edge starting soon here for Worst ADC West. Ziggs has his death cap. I believe that's a new pickup for him. And you're just seeing more and more stats coming through here. The uh, Renekton here of Cavalier about to finish a Randwood's Omen in the near future. And interestingly enough, actually, SGC looking more for the bottom lane than anywhere else. I'm a little bit surprised by that choice. Yeah, I think they should. Um, okay. All they have to do is stand at that inhibitor turret, and it will be indefensible. That okay. way, even if things go wrong, they'll have every building destroyed. Mm. Things most likely aren't going wrong either. So once they get that, they'll have the support coming in from the other angles, and they can have that three-pronged attack with the super minions on both sides and them on the third. Okay, we're looking for this one right there. Bonaparte, Phantom Joe, they're all here. Everyone's going to be there for the 5v5, it looks like. At least for now, of course, Jinx forced to sweep away minions towards the mid lane. Top lane pushing in very, very soon. I feel like the next set of waves is going to be all of them right there. You can see the giant blue blob in the top lane. Yep. That is a scary thing that must be dealt with or it will kill the Nexus. Yep. And, I mean, Jinx kills them pretty quickly. Probably not quickly enough. You can see TTD wants to initiate now because they know their Nexus would die if they let the Super Minions get there. That's why SGC is playing so far back. You're seeing them play far back. You've seen the poke come across as well. Phantom Joe forced to heal again. And now the turret is starting to be under siege. Snow, double Super Minion there in the top lane. Damage across on ADC West. Forced to flash away. Uh, a couple of spells burned there as well. Phantom Joe wants to go in. Knocked around by Glad IQ. Knocked into the air as well. Next is starting to take damage. The dive in on Mia, But it's going to be the re-engage here from Vi. And the first one to go down is going to be the Malphite from TTD. The dive in from Snow. But he is very alone right there. And is trying to get away with the invisibility. And actually survives oh. until just now. Jinx finds one back on Vi. But it's still a 4v3 with minions knocking on the Nexus. This is sure to be the game here. Storm Games Clan going to bring it back 1-1 one to one in this quarterfinal. They want to keep fighting, and we're going to have a game three, guys. Absolutely. This game much faster and cleaner for Storm's game clan. TTD could not keep the bottom lane in check. They did not get the double kill early on in the top lane, so Renekton was an, a massive factor. And, you know, I don't really think there's an advantage coming into game three because both guys have kind of taken their shots early game and late game. Mm -hmm. They have. They've done a whole lot of really crazy things. The one thing that stuck out to me, because I still like Mia as one of the best players in this, All right. uh, in this series, is game one. Uh, TTD first picked the Ziggs away with two mid lane bands on top of it, put him on Needly, who had an impact but not a huge one. This time around, Mia dominated his lane with instead Ziggs. of going equal. Yes, yeah. with Ziggs that they first picked for him and had a much, I would say, bigger impact on the game overall, but of course had a better supporting cast. But I think it's still an important factor. All right, so Ziggs, important. champion to watch. Champion to watch. Three. I also think bottom lane specifically, lane to watch. That's where almost all the ganks are. Mm -hmm. And. Two games in a row, the worst 80 carry from the West has just destroyed that lane. Yep. Yeah. Apparently he's proving that.